Hello, hello, hello. Today is Sunday, January 7, 2024. You follow the solutions to problem 188. There are many good solutions. I chose to show Oregon's solution, but I also give you access to an extremely nice solution, which is a video with pictures by Keith and Bridget. You really want to watch it. And I give you here the website. Here follows Oregon Solutions. We have four linear polarizers placed in succession. We will call the first one, which is vertical P1. The next one, with its axis at 30 degrees to the vertical, we call that P2. The one with its axis at 60 degrees to the vertical, we call P3. And we will call the horizontal one P4. And he gives, he uses a three-digit precision. I want to remind you now here, because that comes up later, that every time that you go to a next polarimeter, the angle changes by 30 degrees, from, three, from 0 to 30 degrees, from 30, 30 to 60 degrees, from 60 to 90 degrees. He follows Mahler's law. Mahler's law states that the intensity of linearly polarized light that passes through a second linear polarizer varies as the square of the cosine of the angle between the plane of the two polarizers. So here is Walter Lewin's sketch, which is not part of Eugen's solution. You see here, intensity I0, unpolarized light coming in. It goes to a linear polarizer, that you see here. This is the direction of polarization. If it is an ideal polarizer, the light intensity that comes out is linearly polarized in this direction, and the intensity is one half I zero, and it is polarized. In practice, the intensity will be somewhat less than half I zero, but we will now assume that that's it's still one half I zero. Then it goes to a second polarizer. The angle of polarization is now theta compared to this one. And then the intensity that comes out is this one half I zero, which goes in times the cosine, cosine square of the angle theta. And it is polarized in that direction. That's my law's law. And Oregon is going to apply Miler's law every time that it goes through a polarizer. So, when unpolarized light goes through its first polarizer, the intensity that comes then out, he calls that I1, which is one half I0. When it goes to the second polarizer, that value, one half I zero, has to be multiplied by the cosine square of 30 degrees. And he has to make that step not only from one to two, but from two to three, and from three to four. And so the net result then is that what comes out of number four is this one half I zero, one half I zero times the power three of three quarter. Because three times do you have to multiply it by the cosine square of the difference between the angles, and that is every time 30 degrees. 
So the net result is then that the answer is that the light intensity that comes out of the fourth linear polarizer is 27, is 27 divided by 128, which is 0.211. Answer to question A. The transmitted light can be decreased by removing polarizer P2 or P3. And here he shows then what the results will be. So he first removes P2 and then independently he removes P3 and he shows that in both cases what comes out of the fourth linear polarizer is the same and it is reduced. The final result that you see here in both cases is that I4 is 0.094 times I0. Answer to question three. Yes, the transmitted light can be extinguished by removing both polarizers P2 and P3. It's obvious because then the first linear polarizer and the last one are at 90 degree angles to each other and so I4 is zero. Why is there a cosine square term in Marlow's law? When vertically linearly polarized light goes through a second linear polarizer with direction theta from the vertical, then the magnitude of the E vector becomes cosine theta. That is rather obvious. Make a sketch. The reason for the cosine square term for the light intensity in Mylar's law is due to the fact that the light intensity is related to the pointing vector, which is the cross product between the E field vector and its associated B field vector. And the magnitude of B is proportional to the magnitude of E. That's the reason why you get cosine square. If you have difficulties, because you don't remember Mahler's law, I think I cover this in detail in lecture 30 of 802. So you may want to take a look there. Lecture 30 of 802. If still you can't do it then, well, then you have to brush up on physics. In any case, the strongest conservation law of physics is that we will always be friends. That's a given.